I'd like to take this opportunity to t uh, explain a little bit about discussion assignments or forum ass assignments. You might that term might be more familiar with it to you. Um, but no matter what course I'm teaching, it, it will be the same procedure. And I'm just going to show you from this particular course. Uh, the setup will be the same no matter what. Um, but anyway, if you click on or when you click on week one discussion, you will find a lot of directions. Okay, it's really I I go to a lot of de painstaking detail to make sure that I can give you the best chance for success and to get the most out of these assignments that you possibly can get. Um, and then you're you're actually finding your way to this via the link right here. Okay. But I'd just like to explain a few things to you. There, under the files link, which is right over here, uh, there's a discussion rubric and example. Uh, I really must insist that you follow the example in those directions. So again, read those carefully. Uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, additionally, you know, there's a, a link to a, a very powerful editing, editing tool. It's a free editing tool. And I would strongly suggest you install that in your system and use it. You can use it on your phone as well. It's a really slick thing. It will eliminate errors to a great degree. And I think you'll uh, appreciate having it. You may already have it, but uh, go take a look. And, and again, it's a free download. You might as well use it. Um, additionally, here's where you'll find the, the question for that particular week in, in the discussions and the due dates and so on. So it's all pretty self-contained. Now let me take you to the files link, which has got the examples. So in this particular one, you can see right here to the left, discussion assignment, rubric, and example. I always give examples of what, what I'm looking for, so you don't have to guess. Um, and I'll just show you the, the, the Midland rubric forum is a, is a true rubric that kind of parses things out. But let me just show you this example. Um, I think this will be more of an illustration as how I want you to set up your work. Now, I'm not going to read this to you because you can. Essentially, uh, no matter what uh, you do, I, I, most every assignment, I want you to do it in a question then answer format and by bolding the question. So if you get a paragraph of questions for, say, a discussion, you should lay it out. It should look exactly like this. Now, this obviously is not from our course. So that wouldn't be a, a smart thing on my part to do. But it's broken up the questions and even sub-questions along the way into bold question, your response. Bold question, your response. Bold question. And this is a pretty lengthy example. And this is a good example, a very high-level example of the kind of quality we need to look for in a graduate program and a business student especially. Uh, so anyway... Here you go. If you're wondering what it should look like, this is what it should look like. Read the directions. Uh, take the time to do that. Make sure you do the reading for the assignment first so you understand what the context of the question is. That'll make it go much quicker versus trying to uh, kind of do it on the fly. But this is for you to help you succeed. And it will help, honestly, when other students reply to your submission, your, your initial submission of your forum or your discussion. It'll help them find out what you're talking about in a very orderly fashion and very quickly. So this is a time saver for everyone, honestly. And it will help you develop much more thorough answers because you'll never miss a question. It can be single-spaced. Uh, I would prefer that, in fact. And if you are going to cite things or you need to cite things to, to make your point, please use APA. So looking forward to reading your work and uh, best of everything to you. Thank you.